There's a call in the third game of the World Series on Saturday night that I think is worth taking a closer look at. This is, of course, the obstruction call at third base that came on the final play of the game. According to ESPN on Twitter, this is actually the first playoff game to end on an obstruction call. And obviously, coming in the World Series, it was a very important call. Now, having read the passage which defines which obstruction is, this seems to be about as close to a textbook case of obstruction that you will see. And I think that in this case, the correct call was indeed made. Because of copyright reasons, I can't show you the video of the play right now, but if you look in the description, there are a couple different links to it. So if you haven't seen it yet, I would recommend pausing this video, watching that one, and then coming back. So to set up our situation, the score is tied at 4-4 four to four between Boston and St. Louis. It's the bottom of the ninth inning, and St. Louis's batter, John Jay, is at the plate. Yadier Molina, the catcher, is on third base. Alan Craig is on second base. The 0-1 pitch is hit to the right side, and second baseman Dustin Pedroia, who's playing up on the grass, makes a good throw home to Jared Salzolamakia. At this point, John Jay has reached first base safely on a fielder's choice. Salzolamakia tags out Molina, who is coming home from third base, for the second out in the inning. He immediately throws the ball down to third base to Will Middlebrooks because he sees Alan Craig is not yet to third base. The throw is wide, and Middlebrooks dives in an attempt to catch the ball, but he is unsuccessful, and the ball rolls into left field. As Middlebrooks is diving, Craig is sliding into third base. They kind of dive and slide at the same moment. And then as Middlebrooks is lying on the ground on his stomach, Watching the ball go into left field, Alan Craig turns to run home, but he trips over Middlebrooks' legs. Third base umpire Jim Joyce immediately points at the play when this happens, and as we'll see in the rule in a second, as soon as Jim Joyce, the umpire, calls obstruction, the ball is dead and the play is over right there. Obviously, in the mass confusion, the play continued, Craig was thrown out at home plate, and everyone within a two-block radius that had facial hair ran out of the field to argue with the umpires, but that is ultimately irrelevant here. As soon as obstruction is called, the play is dead. But let's take a look at the rule to find out the exact definition. As the uh, rule of definitions, rule number two defines obstruction as the act of of a fielder who, while not in possession of the ball and not in the act of fielding the ball, impedes the progress of any runner. I can see some people arguing Middlebrooks actually raised his feet off the ground on purpose in an attempt to do just what happens, to tangle his legs up with Craig's. Um, whether this is done on purpose or not is irrelevant. There's nothing on intent in the rule. All he had to do was impede the runner's progress. And being that Craig fell on all fours, I think it's safe to say that his progress was impeded. But wait a second, you might say. Who is it to say that Middlebrooks was not trying to get up to retrieve the ball? And would that not make him in the act of fielding the ball? Well, the next part of the definition tells us that uh, no, he's not. It is entirely up to the judgment of the umpire as to whether the fielder is in the act of fielding the ball, says the rule. In addition, after a fielder has made an attempt to field a ball and missed, he can no longer be in the act of fielding the ball. And if that wasn't enough for you, it goes on even further to include an example, which is that if an infielder dives at a ground ball and the ball passes him and he continues to lie on the ground and delays the progress of the runner, which is pretty much exactly what happened, he has very likely obstructed the runner. So yes, it was technically a thrown ball rather than a, a, a hit ground ball, but this is about as close of a play as we're going to get to this example as, as we could get, as we could have. So I think it's safe to say that this player meets the criteria for obstruction, but what does that exactly mean? Well, as we jump to our next rule, it says that when obstruction occurs, the umpire should call or signal obstruction. And again, if you watch the 
play, the third base umpire does point right at uh, Craig and Middlebrooks as Craig is tripping or at, right after he tripped. If a play is being made on the obstructed runner, which in this case it was, the ball is dead and all runners shall advance without liability to be put out to the bases they would have reached in the umpire's judgment if there had not been obstruction. And it further clarifies in the next sentence that the obstructed runner shall be awarded at least one base beyond the base he had last legally touched before obstruction. So obviously in this case, he touched third base and then was obstructed on his way to home. So he is entitled to home plate. As far as scoring information goes, because Middlebrooks was called for obstruction, he is therefore charged with an error on the play, and Craig's advancement from third base to home plate is on the E5. Umpires are often criticized for blowing calls. However, as we have seen, this was not one of them. This is about as big of a situation as could have existed, uh, being in the World Series, and the umpires were not only able to get the call right, but the call was made as soon as it happened in perfect accordance with the rules.